Hello everyone. Um, Aves here. So in the last video I made for practicals, uh, AS level 9702, um, the sound quality was not up to the mark. And also I noticed that a lot of you had the problem um, because I could not show you things. So today, um, I, like you can see in the video, um, I will show you how to solve this paper and then we are going to see that uh, how to actually address uh, address different issues. Now, first of all, uh, like in the video, you need to set up um, the circuit as shown because this is a particularly electricity um, exam. So you need to be very careful about few things. So first thing first, and that is that I would always go uh, while setting it up. Uh, through loop uh, through loop by loop wh wh which I mean by this is that basically you start from here and then you go through this loop first attaching 15 and then attaching 10 and then attaching this wire to the the uh, the, the, the ruler uh, that has a wire attached to it and then uh, I'll just complete this loop now what then I'll do is I will then go towards the other loops like for example i would like to go to this loop first and then when i successfully connected it and then i'm going to use this loop or i'll make sure that i attach this loop now by doing this what happens is that the the possibility of getting anything wrong really diminishes because of the fact that now you can check everything um, within that loop whether you have done it correctly or not so when you plug it in you'll realize that both the voltmeters are showing some reading where you have randomly you know if they have shown you about in the middle so you can put it in the middle but um, what I did was I um, uh, they, they have asked you to put it 30 centimeters so approximately um, I put it to 25.5 centimeter.
All right. So basically, they have um, asked you to put at thirty, and um, I would personally, I would take care that I should not go way to away from this value. Uh, so I took twenty five point five because it was convenient at that time. But you can actually match up thirty. It's not very hard. Now, uh, when you do that, you have to write the correct precision. Uh, the precision states that because this reading that you've taken out is basically from a ruler, so you have to make sure that you write the correct precision of that because the ruler has zero point one. So then I will get the one mark. Now. um unfortunately i did not have a switch so i used my hand to you know um remove the wire but you can actually do it using a switch now um when i did that i had two uh, recorded values and uh, the recorded values were uh, 0.58 volts and the other value was 0.92 volts basically that's the correct precision of my um, uh, voltmeter and i would write it like this now i have to tell you this uh, very important thing and that is basically when you write something like this um and your voltmeter is showing maybe let's suppose the voltmeter is showing 1.00 so basically um if you write something like 1 here then it will be wrong because you have not shown the correct precision so make sure whatever is being displayed on the screen of your voltmeter make sure you write it now so um uh, i will get the one mark for just reading it out and because i have uh, successfully made this up now sometimes in electricity um questions you might not be able to get readings there could be three things of uh, um uh, three things of concern number one is that you might not be connecting um you might be wrongly connecting things so um in that case i would always want if i'm really stuck i don't want to you know just um, lose so many marks then i would probably ask the supervisor at that place to help me out for a minor help so that would generally detect a mark and then he might you know check if there is some connection or something you made it wrong the other thing is uh, the apparatus although um, the apparatus is uh, very thoroughly checked but if uh, um, you know in electricity problem uh, paper there are a lot of problems where the apparatus might not be working correctly the voltmeter might not be working correctly so you can actually it uh, ask the supervisor to check this and get it corrected for you also demand for extra time in that particular case so be very vigilant about that now now what i did was um um basically i um then i repeated as you can see in the fast forward so once you have six set of readings you can actually have only take five set of readings and include you may want to include this because um this particular set can always be there now in um, no particular order the examiner doesn't you know um ask you to put it there but what i um usually do is that i do um you know write in a particular order because of the fact that uh, um uh, it's sometimes you know good to make the examiner happy maybe he's not really happy at home all right guys so basically what you need in a table is that you have to have um well i put a serial number just to show that i've taken six readings uh once you take six readings um the examiner is going to give you a five marks this for taking you know six complete set of readings now usually people who take help like examiner uh, or supervisor help at that point if it's a minor help they uh, deduct a minus 1 here if it's a major they will deduct um two here so just remember this in case now the next thing so you see i have written um my x values so the examiner would check my range now range what i do is generally i have this rule 
that I follow 10% above and below. So uh, basically if let's suppose I'm using a meter rule. Uh, so meter rule has a length of a total of 100 centimeters. So I would always try to have 10 centimeters that's just 10% above zero and then um, 100 uh, with 100 I you know take 90 which is below 100 by 10 percent so basically that's what I do so that would you know give me a right range so then I will get a one mark then the examiner would look for the um, uh, column headings and column heading means that you have the right unit uh, sorry the right unit and the right quantity listed so he says in the table you must have six readings of x v1 v2 and v2 upon v1 so basically that's what we need we need the right head headings are correct i will get one mark um, now what i'll do is um, tell you about consistency so um, in consistency i need to you need to understand is that because these values are being measured from a particular instrument whatever instrument is that my uh, voltmeter had a uh, basically a precision of two de decimal places so if you look at all my values in v1 and v2 you will see the same number of decimal places which means my uh, my values are consistent and i will receive a mark here as well now Finally, I'll get to the significant part, but for that, um, I need to, all right, right. So basically I've completed this table and um, uh, what you need to understand is that we, when, once we are calculating value, we need to check for significant figures. Significant figures are only, um, you know, important when you calculate something like V2 upon V1. Now the rule for significant figure is very simple. Uh, what you need to do is you need to have the same um, number of significant figures as uh, least number of SF in raw data. So because my raw data had mostly two in them like here so I would ideally use two or I could use one more than that which means that if I have um, you know two significant figures a minimum I can either use two or I can use three not more than that and not less than that well to make things simple you can actually write it I mean this value that I've written all three significant figures um, that's 100% accurate but if you want to you know write in the same significant figures you can do that like I can write it as 1.2 um, then I can write it as 1.6, um, 2.3, uh, 2.7 and so on 3.1 and 3.6. So basically if you have a, a significant difference between your values here, you may use 2, it's fine, you will get the 100% mark for significant but if you use 3 as well, one more than that, that's also correct but do not go overboard with it which means do not take too many significant figures or too few. So I rule is uh, least number of SF and I'm stressing it again or one more. So basically please keep in mind do not make this mistake you will end up losing a mark here. Now the examiner would check whether your values that you've calculated for V2 and V1 are correct in the table. If they are correct he's going to give you mark pretty simple and that's how you get 10 marks. If you notice the whole thing, you might realize that basically this table, the part C, is so important that it carries marks for half of your experiment. So please make the table as neat as possible, take it very seriously because um, you will end up losing majority of the marks here um, and we don't want that. Now, the next part is that he has asked us to uh, plot a graph between v, uh, v2 and v1 on the y-axis and x on the x-axis. So let's see how we are going to plot the graph. Now, um, one thing that you notice is that on the x-axis where we need to draw x, so I'm just going to put x and I'm going to put uh, the correct unit along with it. Um, you might see there are 8 complete or 8 large boxes whereas uh, here 
uh, on the y-axis, if you if you count them, there are 12 boxes. It's always the same. So this is the standard graph um, the examiner would give you. So let's just write it here. It is basically uh, V2 upon V1. Since we don't have a unit, you may write no units or just leave it blank. It does not really matter. Now, uh, coming to the uh, important part and the first mark I've already labeled what you need actually so uh, just to save some time the first thing they would look for is um, the axis so, so the axis means that they are labeled correctly um, they uh, uh, I mean if if I start writing like for example if you see uh, the readings of X it starts from 10 and ends at 90 so I would probably start here with uh, 10.0 and 20.0, uh, uh, sorry, 20.0 and then 30.0, 40.0, 50.0, 60.0, let's write 70 and 80.0 and finally I'm sorry it should be 90.0 now if you look at it my axis um, my the, the points that I've labeled are exactly according to the line I will get the maximum number of points on the graph using the same space on x-axis this is the way I can do it just remember for axes uh, you should not have um, uh, so no awkward scale first of all uh, what is an awkward scale it is basically any odd numbers or um, something like 0 6 6 6 7 or something like that so don't uh, put numbers which are irrational um, you know uh, don't put um, fractions in it don't put um, anything odd uh, or odd numbers here so please make sure that you have Correct. The other thing that you need to understand is when you're labeling the axis, make sure that after every three boxes, every large three boxes, which are these ones, you should have a reading written. If you don't write the reading and you go beyond that, they would um, deduct a mark here. So please write readings after three boxes. Do not go, uh, do not take spaces of four boxes for one reading. Please do that. Um, then you need to understand is that you can start uh, from uh, any value just remember this and uh, no jagged line is required um, no you know um, zero zero point is required so please make sure that you can write from any value it does not matter now let's quickly see what we can do about this. So we have 12 boxes and the maximum reading I have is uh, 3.6 and the minimum reading is 1.2. So ideally I would like to, the best way to do it, uh, do it is because um, I would rather start it from zero and I need to reach it four. So I need actually four things. And then if I divide four, um, 12 boxes by four, so I would get three. So um, what I need to do is I need to have an increment of uh, one addition of one um, after every three boxes. What I mean by this is that if I start from um, zero right here, so 0, 0.0. So after every three boxes, I can increase uh, 1.0 and then after three, because that is the limit, I can't go beyond that, um, 2.0. And then after another three boxes, that is 3.0. And finally, I will reach here. So this is one method where you can actually divide the number of boxes with the change in your maximum minimum. That would give you a general idea how to you know make an axis that would uh, fill the whole graph. Now, um, so, uh, so what I'm going to do is now I'm going to just uh, um, let's do it and see how we can manage this. So um, I'll just start plotting. So at 10, I have 1.2. So which means that uh,
So basically what you need to understand is before plotting, so I'm just going to put it here. Um, just remember that all observations must be plotted. And um, um, when you do uh, plot all observations, there should be no blobs at all. So the pen I'm using right now, your, um, your pencil in the exam should be very sharpened. It should have a nice, nice tip so that when you put a, a cross or you put a dot with a light circle on it, the examiner, it should not look like a blob. What is a blob? Blob is something like this, a very thick circle that covers half of the box. So it should be very small and just to identify it, you make a small circle. That would be the ideal case. Now I'll just start plotting and you may see how I will do it. I just put crosses, so a cross may be very thin like this and it would work for you. Alright guys, so now I have plotted all the points like you can see. So I have six readings plotted. Uh, the first thing that I would like you to understand from here, I'm just going to zoom it out a bit uh, just to, you know, make you understand. So if you look at my graph, so you might see uh, that all my plotted points are not like very thick points, they're just small crosses which I like to do if you want to put dots that's fine but don't make a blob uh, now the next thing you might really need to understand here is that uh, uh, what we're dealing with right now is um, that you might see that the graph that I you know cho uh, the points that I have starts from somewhere here and it goes somewhere here so this is the area i have used for the graph so uh the area which i have not used is about this much which is a box and about uh, this much so i need to have at least uh 50 percent of uh the graph space given so please use at least 50%. So right now my, my graph is bigger than that, so I'm on a safe zone. But if you tend to have a smaller graph, make sure that you stretch either reading from here or here in my case, if you have a graph that is shortened from the x-axis, you can stretch the reading from here or here. Just remember, you may choose any false origin. Do not stick to zero, zero, that would not work for you at all. Now uh, I'll just erase this because it gets uh, messy. So I have already, you know, um, done this, and now we are going to move towards line of best fit first, and then I'm going to tell you what exactly the quality means. So what I'm going to do is, um, since I have done the plotting right, I have used um, about more than 50% of the graph, so my axes are correct, my plotting. Is correct. So let's see how uh, uh, how the line of best fit is drawn. So most of the people think that uh, line of best fit is the one which uh, uh, which uh, crosses through many points, but that's not wrong. Line of best fit means that um, equally uh, balanced points on each side. Um, now what it means is that for example even if your points are very disturbed 
like this but your line goes through them like this uh, or in between of them so these are balance point and that that is the line of best fit right um, it is not necessary that you connect two points or you try to connect two points like this please make sure that the points that you draw um, the line that you sh draw should be close to every single point so I'm just gonna try I'm just using a software and I'll try to draw um, the best possible line of best fit okay so right now I've tried it and you might see um, that on uh, my line you might see that this point is not on the line but it's above the point above the line this is also not on the line this is above the line this is all not on the line this is above the line whereas all these I have three points which are below the line and they have almost the same proportion of um, width from the line as the uh, points above so this line can be regarded as a line of best fit so please do not try to uh, basically connect many points make sure the points are balanced now sometimes what happens is that one point may be something like it might be somewhere here so you've got a point which is here now don't worry about it you can actually balance uh, five points and then you circle this point and clearly label that this point that you got was basically uh, anomalous so anomalous point um, is allowed if it's only one if there is there are many anomalous points make sure that you redo one of those readings so that at least five of them are near the line so once I do that I will get the one mark for the line of best fit and now I can move to the quality and quality is a very tricky one uh, well it's not very tricky one but uh, let me explain this in this uh, manner so usually uh, dependent on depending on what type of um, experiment it is um, the examiner would set a certain criteria for quality which means that uh, he would check whether uh, the points that you have um, are plus minus some you know boxes away or maybe 0 0.02 or sometimes 0 0.2 doesn't matter so basically whatever he is checking for how much your points are away from the line so if you have a um, if you have a uh, uh, an experiment points and then those points some points are here some points are here and some points are here some points are here so I'm what I'm saying is that basically this is a perfectly best fit line with the larger points that I made but the point is because they're too far from the line right whether he's checking this way or this way so it's too far from the line so in this case because we calculate v2 over v1 so he would probably check uh, the vertical ones then you would not get a quality mark right now my points fortunately they came really close to the line and they have hardly a difference of a, a small uh, box which means i will be able to score uh, one for the quality so make sure that uh, your uh, points are uh, closer well uh, not everybody will get it because of uh, different you know uh, errors you might not have um, checked a systematic error or a random error was too large so make sure that when you're doing this experiment you do it very very carefully so that you get um, really great, great points so uh, now once we've done this so I'll just erase all you know the other things um, now since we've done this now we'll move to the next part and that's where we try to find um, the gradient of the line now so uh, moving towards this um, uh, I have to determine the gradient and the y-intercept now y-intercept and gradients can be found out uh, using traditional way like uh, you can actually use y minus y1 x2 minus x1 so basically 
uh, the gradient can be found out by using this formula you know this um, by math and uh, the thing is the examiner would not know which points um, you have used unless you state them so I would ideally um, write you know x1 y1 like this and underneath I'll just put the point so I'm just going to put it um, on um, in fact let me just put it uh, zoom in later so that's x2 and y2 now uh, what you want to do is when you are doing this so make sure that you take points which are easier for you uh, to actually get it from the uh, from the graph but also um, I would suggest that at least take points which are 50% uh, away from the line. What I mean by this is that let's suppose I, I'm, I'm looking at this point, I think this is easier for me to calculate, so I just put a cross here. Um, so I'm just putting a line so the examiner knows exactly which two points I've taken and then I have um, I think um, in here um this might be okay i think this might uh, be easy for me because uh, it tends to have a solid line i like it so you can move it here downwards and it's 80. now you notice that the points i have taken on the line is basically very very far away from each other and that's the best way now ideally what you want to do is uh, you would want a triangle that you create here um, a big one because that's what the examiner requires they say basically you need to have at least this distance between the points uh, greater than the 50 percent of uh, length of line please remember this so if somebody has taken a small um, gradient line that would not be uh, correct so that is inaccurate so please don't do this um, take points which are very very far from each other so let's uh, see let's just calculate it quickly and uh, be done with this All right, now, since I found the uh, gradient, um, now you might have noticed the actual reading I was getting here was 0 0.028, uh, sorry, 298. So that's what I was getting. Now, what I did was basically, if you look at the readings I have, my still, uh, I'm still following the same rule for significant figures because I need at least uh, two because most of my readings, the minimum was two. Uh, so I used at least two significant figures I could have um, written it as 298 as well if you want to write it it's also fine so I can write it so you don't get confused so 0298 would also be fine now since I have um, more than uh, a large uh, triangle shown and uh, plus you know correct gradient so please remember most of you will get i mean everybody will get a different gradient but it will be um you know generally the trend will be the same it will be positive and it might have a value close to this so i will get one mark now why intercept if you have taken a zero zero origin on um x-axis so basically you can take it from the graph directly wherever the line touches but since my x-axis starts from 10 so which means that the line has touched way um, below um, the point I'm getting here so I have to use the equation 
which is y equals to mx plus c. Now I can use the same points which I have here. So I write 1.3 here, uh, 15.0 times the gradient which is 0 0.30 plus c. So once I do that, let's quickly do this 15.0. So uh, the answer I'm getting is 0 0.85. So I'm just going to write 0 0.85. And because the y on the y-axis there were no units, so I will not write units. Well, uh, generally, even if you don't write units here, they might will give you uh, the correct. Um, they only look for the answer here, so don't worry about units. But if you have this habit to write units every single time, it's a great thing to do. Now, uh, moving on to the like, uh, last part, and it's very, very important to understand this. Very easy to understand, actually. Uh, so, what they have given is, they have said that the quantities V1, V2 are related by this equation, where uh, P has this value, Q has this value, A and B are constants. Fair enough. So, it says, determine the values for A and B. Now, if you look at the uh, equation here, it says uh, V2 upon V1 equals to A uh, upon P. I'm just going to separate X here um, and then Q upon B. Now, if you look at the equation, this can be compared by the equation of MX plus C because the graph that we have is a straight line with an intercept. Now, if you look at it, um, on Y axis, we had uh, V2 upon V1. On the x-axis, we had x upon uh, or x in centimeters. So what do we get really? What we get is that the gradient in this equation should be equal to a upon p and the y-intercept, uh, which is uh, c, is equal to q upon b. Now, uh, we have the value for gradient that was 0 0.030, the value of a, uh, is given as we, we have to find it sorry and we have uh, it is 15 so I'm just going to multiply it so it is 0 0.030 times 15 equals to a and then a is going to be uh, 0 0.45 uh, because the units were ohms here and the gradient was centimeter minus 1 so I am going to write it like this. Now I'll write 0 0.45 uh, ohms centimeter minus one and I have the current significant figure so I'll get one mark here. Now uh, the y-intercept we got was 0 0.45 with no units at all. Q um, was given as 10 and B is what we need to find. So B equals to 10 divided by 0 0.45. So 10, let me just do it on the calculator, 0 0.45. And what I'm getting is 22.2 ohms. So I'm just gonna write it here. So that's how I complete this, uh, the whole thing. Now, um, uh, what I generally do is, um, we have a large academy where we teach uh, students online. If you really need help in any of the topics um, for uh, AS level A2 or if you're a Dixel student or IG, um, AQA, so we teach across all boards so you may um, have a good time with us. So I hope you understand this. Um, I'll see you the next time uh, with a different experiment related to question number two. Have a nice day.